Hello everyone, welcome to this practical pathology series by Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. So looking at the image and the diagrams and illustrations, I am sure you might have known that this topic is leomyoma of uterus. We will be discussing this topic in these headings. We will talk about the various risk factors, the etiopathogenesis, the clinical features, most importantly the gross and microscopic features in great detail because this is a topic which I will be talking about for the undergraduate students in pathology. So finally we will touch upon the treatment aspect. Aspects. Now, what is this uterine leomyoma? These are benign tumors. Leomyoma means a smooth muscle tumor. Benign smooth muscle tumor. Uterine leomyoma meaning benign smooth muscle tumor of the uterus. They are most common tumor in females and they are commonly referred to as fibroids. These leomyomas can occur in any age group but they are more common in 30 to 50 years. The incidence decreases after menopause. The etiology of uterine leomyoma is not known but then age of menarche and parity they are the most important risk factors. So earlier age of menarche and if that particular individual patient is nulliparous, these individuals are at high risk of developing leomyomas, uterine leomyomas. The other risk factors are obesity and lack of exercises. The most important one being exposure to environmental estrogens before puberty. That's an important risk factor because that leads to hyper responsiveness, you know, even to the normal levels of estrogen at adult stage. And that's why leomyomas can occur in these individuals. Now, what did we learn? The lifetime estrogen exposure is the most important risk factor for the development of leomyoma because leomyomas are estrogen sensitive tumors, estrogen dependent tumors. There are some cytogenetic abnormalities, 40 to 50 percent of them they show karyotypic abnormalities, the most common being translocations on the chromosome number 12, deletions on the chromosome of the long arm of chromosome 3 and the long arm of chromosome number 7. Okay, there are some genes involved which are HGMA2, ESR2, RAD5 and MED12. These are the genes involved in leomyomas. Okay, then what are the clinical features? Most of the leomyomas, they are asymptomatic. But they can manifest with abnormal uterine bleeding, particularly menorrhagia, which is more common in a submucosal type of leomyoma. We'll talk about different types of leomyoma shortly. Now, they can also interfere in fertility and the larger tumors, they result in various symptoms, particularly related to compression symptoms. They are pressure symptoms, symptoms because of pressure effects by these tumors on to the surrounding structures. Now, we will move on to understanding the gross and microscopic features of leomyoma. What are the gross features? These are usually multiple with sizes ranging from you know, microscopic foci to large bulky tumors. The cut surfaces are very well circumscribed. They are grey white and world cut surface. Remember, this world cut surface is a characteristic appearance of leomyomas. They can be single or multiple and if the tumor is very large, they show degenerative changes. You know, but, you know lipo, leomyomas and cellular variant, they will be yellowish in color. Normally, they are grey white in color. Now, based on the location of leomyoma, they can be grossly morphologically categorized as submucosal leomyoma. Okay, if, if it protrudes into the endometrial cavity with the lining of endometrium there, they are called submucosal leomyoma and intramural purely within the uterine myometrium. They are intramural leomyoma and if it is beyond the sub, if it is just beneath the serosa, they are called sub -serosal. Sometimes, you know, they can be pedunculated with a very short pedicle. They grow out, they grow and they are called pedunculated leomyomas. Occasionally, sometimes these tumors may detach and grow in some other place and that is called as a parasitic leomyoma. Now, this is an example. This is a cut surface of specimen of uterus with leomyoma. Can you see that this is a submucosal type of leomyoma? This is a pure intramural type of leomyoma. Look at this. These are sub -serosal, just beneath the serosal aspect. That's a very tiny sub -serosal leomyoma. That's a small leomyoma. So that means leomyomas can be of variable sizes. Look at this. This is another leomyoma. So most of these leomyomas are gray white in color. They are very well circumscribed lesions. Can you make out? It looks as if you can scoop out the leomyoma. So these are very well circumscribed tumors, gray white in color. This is a sub a very large sub leomyoma. So this is how a classical 
cut surface of Leo Mayama looks. So this is the source of this particular image. So there is one uh, thing you need to understand, the concept of red degeneration. What is this? This is because of hemorrhagic, in, hemorrhagic infarction of a leomyoma. This is a complication usually occurs in pregnancy. The common cause is because of obstruction of venous drainage at the periphery of the lesion. You know, this is also referred to as carneous degeneration. Now, microscopically, it is a very characteristic feature. The pattern is that of interlacing fascicles. Okay, interlacing fascicles are whirling of smooth muscle cells. Now, these individual smooth muscle cells are uniform in size and shape and they have a very characteristic oval to elongated nuclei with blunt ends and that's a cigar shaped nuclei. Classically, smooth muscle cells have cigar shaped nuclei. The cytoplasm is abundant and eosinophilic with elongated bipolar processes. There may be many microscopic variants of leomyoma, which includes you know, cellular leomyoma, leomyoma with very bizarre nuclei. They can be mitotically active leomyoma. They can show hydrop hydropic uh, degeneration. They can be apoplectic. They can be lipomatous, epithelioid, mixoid, desitin leomyoma, etc. Okay. Now, for you as undergraduate, just note that these leomyomas are composed of interlacing fascicles of these smooth muscles, which contain elongated or spindle-shaped cells with an oval or elongated nuclei with blunt ends. Look at these nuclei. They are like a cigar. So cigar shaped nuclei is very characteristic of smooth muscle tumor. So this is a slide scanner view showing a leomyoma. So this is one such leomyoma. You can easily make out that these are well circumscribed lesion. On higher magnification, you can make out the interlacing fascicles of these smooth muscle, right? On higher magnification, you can make out the nuclear features which looks like that of a cigar, okay? That's elongated nuclei with blunt ends. So that's a cigar shaped nuclei. So that's a very characteristic of leomyoma. The various types of degeneration you can expect in leomyoma are hyaline degeneration, mucoid degeneration, liquefactive, fatty, red degeneration, we already said it, you can find some amount of calcification in certain leomyomas. So let me explain a slide of leomyoma. We can easily make out that this is a section from the uterus, endometrium and myometrium. We can make out endometrium here, right? So this is the endometrial surface and the rest is myometrium. So these are the normal myometrial tissue which you can make out composed of the smooth muscle. This is a well circumscribed lesion in the myometrium. Okay. And that is leomyoma, leomyoma what we are looking at, right? So on higher magnification, these leomyomas are comprised of interlacing fascicles of smooth muscle. Right? Look at this. Can you make out the interlacing fascicles of smooth muscle? Till higher magnification, you can easily appreciate the nuclear morphology. Look at these nuclei. All the nuclei look similar. They are elongated with blunt ends. They look like a cigar shaped nuclei, right? So that is a characteristic feature of leomyoma. So interlacing fascicle, you can make out, right? Interlacing fascicles of smooth muscles with characteristic nuclear features of smooth muscles. So this is how a leomyoma look on microscopy. Well, how do one diagnose a case of leomyoma? Of course, physical examination, then the sonography is the imaging modality of choice. And once you diagnose, once a surgeon diagnose a case of leomyoma, the treatment modality includes surgical and medical and surgical therapy. If the medical therapy doesn't work, surgical therapy in the form of uterine artery embolization, it could be just excision of the leomyoma, which is called as myomectomy. Or if the leomyomas are too many or multiple, you excise the entire uterus that is hysterectomy is the treatment of choice thank you for watching if you have liked this video please hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe and do share if you feel this video is of useful for undergraduate students thank you